days, mate. Look, the last the last plan, mate, on Castor Tour. The, these slabs are part of uh, our slab stock build for, for the, uh, to keep the hot nose going in during, during the period where the, the, the heavy end is offline. Effectively, it's been a it's been a challenging day today. Uh, emotions are running high. Um, yeah, we sort of looked from an outsider looking in, to be honest, with regards to more of a poker than uh, number number five furnace. Obviously, we took last furnace five off, and. What that has resulted then is we start to take some of the caster or some of the steel and slab units off and cast it to be in that first unit within the steel plant. Yeah, a sad day, um, and no doubt to the many people that worked on this plant, a, a lot of memories. The caster two was was built at a budget of just over 80 million. A split mould caster was in its infancy at the time, so the design of it was critical. The caster was fully automated and that, that was a rarity in them days to fully automate anything. So the technology we had on there was, was unbelievable. You've got to understand, you know, I don't think uh, people understand the actual size of things and the segments themselves, are, uh, they, they're actually massive, the slab goes through, and what's in the segments and what holds the segments in, it's all real top of the notch engineering and it's, it's difficult to replicate with anything else. It's, it's a one-off and, uh, Oh, she's, she was a good, uh, she's a good machine. Do you think in 1992 when it was commissioned, there was a huge order book, um, quite groundbreaking as well on, on what it was producing. It was producing a 2.7 white slab for the North American market. Um, later on in his career then, in the early 2000s, he started to go through a twin mold. But it's gone into some real niche market too, if I'm honest, over the last, uh, over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, most recently, it's, uh, it's sort of created what good looks like from a high silicon order book perspective, supporting a super armor order book. What Casa 2 has allowed us is to bring in brands, apprentices, operators, and, and, and typically as a bit of a learning caster, whilst we then start moving people from, say, caster 2 to caster 1 and the caster 3. We've been working on this project now since the, the end of last year, uh, going into January. It's not just a case of uh, the caster coming off. Um, there's been a lot of planning to get to this position, um, but it's raw. It's, it's extremely raw today for, for everyone involved. Whilst I reflect and I look at all the happy memories and, and no doubt all the workforce and those who have been involved, whether it's the building of caster to the commissioning, the operations, the learning, is, there's been many memories on that asset. I think it's important to also consider in terms of what does the future look like and, and, and investing 1.25 billion on this plant over the next two to three years will hopefully springboard us that over that period of time we can get back to being in the Premier League of steel making where we're often a green product, uh, something that our customers are continue to try and try and get and certainly what we are trying to achieve is to get target net zero within the UK. Um, there's significant uh, capex investments going into Castle 1 and 3, uh, over £40 million worth. So there's two sides of it. There's, it's sort of it's bittersweet where we look at the assets coming off uh, and going into cessation, but there's a, there's a new world coming um, of life extension on the casters where hopefully we can, we can sort of start producing um, that producing different types of steel as well in line with the AF. In terms of when we start back up in, in three to four years' time, okay, we expect to be making 90% of the current order book with, with the new kit that we got online in terms of the EAF and the Able Furnace. But in terms of the 10% that we, we initially don't think we might be able to make, given the experience we've got in the workforce, given our knowledge of making these products with the existing processes, you know, if anyone's going to be able to like push push the barriers and get into those markets with the new uh, green steel route, it, it'll be the tall but. What we're looking at doing is investing in technology and I think the technology we'll invest in will put the works another 20, 30 years, which is, uh, which is a good thing for the area and a good thing for the people working here.